Hello and welcome to the Rancher's Guide to Profit podcast series. I'm Clint Berry with the Red Angus Association of America and I'm joined here today with Larry Keenan, Director of Breed Improvement for the Association. Larry, can you describe some of your responsibilities with the Association as Breed Improvement Director? Well, Clint, I would start with my main uh, responsibility and that would be the oversight and management of our national cattle evaluation. Now that national cattle evaluation basically is what produces our EPDs, which we would use to genetically describe Red Angus cattle in the breed. Larry, I travel across the country and go to a lot of bull sales and get the opportunity to speak with a lot of our commercial bull customers. And one of the common questions I get is about the sheer amount of data that is available to them in the catalog presentations at those bull sales when they're buying bulls. Could you talk a little bit about the types of data that is available and how to utilize them? Clint, I would agree that, that a lot of times we certainly overwhelm our commercial customers with data. And data is certainly a great thing, but again, it can be, become overwhelming. Uh, many times at uh, bull sales, we have anything from actual weights all the way down to EPDs. Here we have the data basically breaking down into four different categories that are typically seen in bull cell catalogs. First group of data we would consider actual weights. Typically, we see birth weights uh, is what most producers present in their catalog uh, for that actual weight. Now, actual weights are simply what a animal weighs on any given day. They cannot be compared across calves because differences of the day the calf was born, as well as a little bit more and depth, the age of that dam uh, that produced that calf. Therefore, you cannot compare those actual weights against calves from, you know, from the same herd, even if they're managed in the same environment. The next best thing to use uh, as far as data and genetic and in describing cattle, evaluating cattle, are adjusted weights. Those adjusted weights uh, Essentially, are the actual weights adjusted to a common constant uh, for weaning weight that would be 205 days of age, uh, for weaning or for yearling weight that would be 365 days of age. Although they're better than actual weights, they do not account for uh, the environment that, that calf was raised in, uh, management differences between herds, or even management differences within a single operation. Uh, if you carry up to the next, uh, next step, we discuss ratios. Ratios uh, are great for comparing calves that are in the same contemporary group. However, you cannot compare accurately uh, ratios on one calf from contemporary group A uh, in, to a calf in contemporary group B because those environmental differences still exist. So, so far, Clint, we've, we've really talked about uh, actual, actual, adjusted, and ratios. And those are simply measurements of how well that animal performed. They are nowhere near uh, what an animal can pass on to its, to its next generation of offspring. And that's truly what the commercial bull customer is after. So, the last category here would be EPDs. And those are the only pieces of data that can accomplish the goal of genetically describing cattle. EPDs account for all of the things that ratios and adjusted measurements cannot account for, such as uh, you know, mating bias, which would be the genetics of the sire and dam that produced that calf. They account for an environment that, that animal is, is raised in, uh, as well as management differences across the herds. So Larry, when a bull customer is looking at bulls from different parts of the country, say bulls in Florida and bulls in Montana, do EPDs account for the differences where those bulls are located? Absolutely, Clint. And therefore, customers can compare across those wide ranges across the country because the EPDs eliminate or take out environmental and management differences. So Larry, we've discussed that EPDs are the best tool for bull customers to utilize when making selections for their bulls to go back in their herd. But when you go to some sales, 
some breed associations have upwards of 20 EPDs listed, and that's an information overload. What's Red Angus's stance on this? Clint, Red Angus's philosophy is to accurately describe our animal's genetics using the fewest EPDs as possible. That is achieved through the use of economically relevant traits, which is often presented as ERTs. So Larry, what do you mean by ERT? Clint, an ERT is simply an evaluation or measurement of a trait that directly affects a producer's profitability. Furthermore, we break those ERTs into four categories that have a major impact on producer's profitability equation. Those four categories would be reproduction, growth, maintenance, and carcass. And as you can tell from the list of EPDs within these four categories, Red Angus describes our cattle using a very minimal number of EPDs as compared to some other breeds. We describe our cattle using 13 EPDs. On upcoming podcasts, we'll be discussing the benefits of total herd reporting, the importance of EPD accuracy, and we'll be delving into some of the ERTs that are unique to Red Angus. Thanks for joining us on the Rancher's Guide for Profit and tune in for upcoming podcasts for tips to add profit to your program utilizing Red Angus. You can find a complete listing of all the podcast series at redangus.org.